I think I was probably eight or nine years old when I heard fifes and drums for the very first time. I started taking drum lessons. A couple years after that, went to what's called the Fife and Drum Muster, and I saw the Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps, the oldest infantry regiment in the Army. So I remember pulling one of the guys aside and said, well, how do I get to do that? Like, what, what do I need to do to be that good? To be a good musician, you really have to practice every day. You're always going for the next goal and the next achievement. I worked really hard and had an opportunity to audition after high school for, uh, for the 3rd Infantry of the Old Guard Fight for Drum Corps. So this one here with the red hoops, that was my original drum from, uh, from when I first started learning how to play. And that's my son's drum, and that's a British regimental drum from the early uh, 20th century. My wife is a fifer, and um, that's how we met at a performance. Our daughter Abigail plays piano and violin. Our son Nathaniel plays drums, plays piano. You know, this has always been really a big part of our family culture. Well, after I left the, uh, the military, I had probably three or four different uh, starts and stops with other universities. So I would go with a, you know, one semester, and it just felt like it was taking so long to get done that the end was never in sight. So when I was first introduced to the American Military University, um, the finish line was always just there. Put in a lot of good, uh, hard work, a lot of intensive work, and then you get that accomplishment that says, you know what, I just completed this class. And it's the same feeling when you master a piece of music. I had amazing instructors. I mean, instructors that had walked in the same shoes that I did. So instructors that went through all of this to be successful entrepreneurs and business leaders were guiding me to be a successful entrepreneur and a business leader. When I was doing my practicum for my MBA, this practicum was generating a business plan. I was doing it on a business plan for a microbrewery. And because my wife and I both love Williamsburg, we would go down there and I sort of connected with this new startup brewery. I learned about the business and learned about some of the opportunities and challenges. So Kyle, what's, uh, what's in the brew tanks today? Uh, it's a uh, uh, FB1 today. We, we just added tangerine. That we oh, nice. To start I love that. Tangerine wheat. And uh, yeah, I can grab a couple cups. Yeah, that'd be great. I was able to put the current business model that they had, and I was able to match it up to this business plan that I'd learned to create through AMU. So when we had the opportunity to become investor owners of the brewery, I said, okay, this is something that we would really love to be a part of. It is a very successful, amazing brewery with an amazing culture, but I wouldn't be a part of that if it wasn't for the education at AMU. Tattoo is a military term for evening music performance. Meeting uh, the founders of the, of the Washington Tattoo, we talked about my business career and you know, what I did in the Old Guard, and they said, hey, we'd love to, to have you come on as a, as a uh, member of the board of directors, as well as the chief strategy officer. The Washington Tattoo, we had our first annual gala. That will give us the foundation to really commit to our mission. We go into underserved communities and we reach out to you know, veterans that might uh, be dealing with issues and we teach music. We donate instruments and we dedicate our time and resources to teach them how to play. There's a beautiful link between music and happiness and music and joy and music and feeling that you're really a part of something. Without the flexibility of a program like AMU, there are so many things that I wouldn't be a part of. It has opened up doors that wouldn't have been open had I not had that education. My name is Edward Krizik, and I'm proud to be a graduate of AMU.